you have listened to a complex murder in the first degree case. You have listened to the testimony. It is your duty to sit down and try and separate the facts from the fancy. One man is dead, another man's life is at stake. If there is a reasonable doubt in your minds as to the guilty of the accused, then you must bring me a verdict of not guilty. If, however, there is no reasonable doubt, then you must find the accused guilty. However you decide, the verdict must be unanimous. The death sentence is mandatory in this case. You are faced with a grave responsibility. Thank you, gentlemen. The alternate jurors are excused. The jury will now retire. something. I called the weather bureau this morning. It's going to be the hottest day of the year. Okay, gentlemen, everybody's here. If there's anything you need, I'll be outside the door. Just knock. I didn't know they locked the door. Sure they locked the door. What did you think? Well, I didn't know. It never occurred to me. What's all this then? Oh, uh, I thought we'd vote by ballot. That's a great idea. Maybe we get him elected senator. Okay, gentlemen, I think we should take our seats. We should sit in order, you know, by jury number one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Okay, gentlemen, you can handle this whatever way you want. I ain't going to make any rules. I think it's customary to take a preliminary vote. Yeah, let's vote. Okay, let's remember we have a first degree murder charge here. If we vote the accused guilty, we must send them to the chair. That's mandatory. I think we know that. Okay, lads, let's see who's where. Remember, this is a 12 to nothing vote. Either way, that's the law. Those voting guilty, raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, that's eleven voting guilty. Who's voting not guilty? Right, one. Now we know where we are. <laughs> what do we do now? I guess we talk. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Looks like we're here for dinner. <laughs> So, you really think he's innocent? I don't know. You sat in court with the rest of us. You saw what we did. The kid's a dangerous killer. You can see it. He is 18 years old. That's old enough. He stabbed his own father four inches into the chest. They proved it a dozen different ways in court. You want me to list them for you? No. Then what do you want? I just want to talk. Well, what's there to talk about? Eleven men in here thinks he's guilty. No one had to think twice about it except you. I want to ask you something. Do you believe his story? I don't know if I believe it or not. Maybe I don't. So how come you vote not guilty? Well, there were 11 guilty votes. It's not easy to raise my hand and send a boy off to die uh, without talking about it first. Supposing we're wrong. I'm willing to talk about it. This kid has been kicked around his whole life. His mother died when he was nine. He spent a year in an orphanage while his father was serving time for forgery. He's had a pretty miserable 18 years. I just think he deserves a few minutes. That's all. Well, look, 
maybe this is an idea. I haven't given it too much thought, but it occurs to me that it's up to us to convince this gentleman that he's wrong and that we're right. That's a good idea. Suppose we go once around the table. I guess you're first. Well, it's hard to put into words. I just thought he was guilty. I thought it was from the word go. Nobody's proved otherwise. Nobody had to prove otherwise. The burden of proof is on the prosecution. Okay, here's what I think. And I have no personal feelings about this. I just want to talk about the facts and here they are. The old man that lived downstairs heard a fight and heard the boy say, I'm going to kill you. It's obvious to me that the, the boy's entire story is flimsy. He said he was at the movies, yet one hour later he couldn't remember what movies he'd seen or who played in them. Yeah, and what about the woman across the street? Yeah, she was the only one that actually saw the killing. Now, fellas, let's go in order, please. Who's next? Uh, juror number five? Can I pass? Well, that's your privilege. Number six? Well, I don't know. I was starting to be convinced very early in the case. But I was looking for a motive. That's fierce and important. If you don't have a motive, you don't have a case, right? The row between the lad and his father. I just can't see two slaps in the face provoking him into committing murder. Everyone has a breaking point. Well, what about you, juror number seven? I don't know. It's all been said. We could talk about it forever. Look at his record. When he was 10, he was in children's court. He threw a rock at a teacher. When he was 15, he was in reform school. He stole a car. He's been arrested for mugging. He was picked up twice for knife fighting. They say he's real handy with a knife. He's a very fine boy, as far as I can see. It's these kids, the way they are nowadays. When I was a kid, I called my father, sir. I've got a kid, he's 22 years old. When he was nine, he ran away from a fight. I saw it. I was so embarrassed, I almost threw up. I said, I'm gonna make a man out of you if I have to break you in two trying. But I made a man out of him. When he was 16, we had a fight. Hit me in the jaw. Big kid. I haven't seen him for two years. Kids, you work your heart out. Well, let's get going. I don't know. I just don't know. He's guilty. If I were the boy and I killed my father, I would not return home. I would be too afraid the police to be there. That said, I think he's guilty. Well, I'm convinced he is guilty. Okay, what about the boy? What about the knife to find in the old man's chest? The knife this fine, upright boy admitted to buying on the night of the killing. All right, let's talk about it. I'd like to see it again. Mr. Foreman. The knife and the way it was born is pretty, uh, pretty strong evidence, don't you think? I do. Everyone, everyone connected to the case identified the knife. Now you're trying to tell me to say that somehow this uh, knife fell through a hole in the, in, the, in, the boy's in, the, in the boy's pocket. Somebody picked it up in the street, went to the old man's house, stabbed him in the chest, just to test his, uh, just to test his sharpness. Incredible. No, I'm just saying it's possible. Maybe the boy lost his knife and somebody stabbed his father with a similar knife. Take a look at this knife. It's a very unusual knife. I never seen one like it. Neither had the storekeeper to sold it to the boy. A pretty incredible uh, coincidence, don't you think? I'm just saying a coincidence is possible. And I say it's not possible. It's the same knife. What do you think you're doing? Where did you get it? I went out walking for a couple of hours last night. I walked to the boy's neighborhood. I bought that knife two blocks from the boy's house. It would be a terrible coincidence for another person to stab the father with the same kind of knife. But it's interesting. He found a knife exactly like the one the boy bought. Okay, I think we should just get on with it. 
I have a proposition to make to all of you. I'd like you 11 men to vote by secret ballot. I'll abstain. If there are 11 guilty votes, we'll bring a guilty verdict to the judge right now. Check, I'll buy that. Guilty. 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 Not guilty. Guilty. Well, how do you like that? And another chap flips his wings. Right. Who was it? You really are something. You voted guilty like the rest of us. Then some golden voice preacher rips your heart out about some underprivileged kid and you change your vote. He didn't change his vote. I did. I knew it. This gentleman has been standing alone against us. He doesn't say the boy is not guilty. He just isn't sure. It's not easy to stand alone against the ridicule of others. So he gambled for support and I gave it to him. I liked his motives. The boy on trial is probably guilty, but I'm not sure. Looks like we're here for dinner. Supposing the old man really did hear the kid say, I'm gonna kill you. How many times have we all used that phrase? Darling, I could kill you for that. Junior, you do that again and I'm going to kill. It doesn't mean we'd really kill anybody. What are you trying to give us here? The phrase was, I'm going to kill you. The kid yelled it at the top of his lungs. Don't tell me he didn't mean it. Anyone who says a thing like that, they mean it. Gee, I don't know. I was in work the other day and had an argument with a man at a work in the bank. He called me an idiot. I yelled at him. This guy is trying to tell us what isn't so. The kid said he was going to kill him, and he did kill him. Let me ask you this. Do you think the boy would shout out such a thing for the whole neighborhood to hear him? I don't think so. He's much too bright for that. Bright? He's a common ignorant slob. He don't even speak good English. He doesn't speak good English. <laughs> Mr. Foreman, I would like to change my vote to not guilty. You what? You heard me. Are you sure? I'm sure. The vote is nine to three in favor of guilty. Well, if this isn't the living end. Can I ask you why you rub your nose like that? Well, if it's any of your business, I just do it because it bothers me a little. Is it because of your eyeglasses? It is. Now, can we get on to something else? Your eyeglasses made those two deep impressions on the sides of your nose. I hadn't noticed that before. The woman who testified that she saw the killing had those same marks on the sides of her nose. She kept rubbing them in court. He's right. She did do that a lot. This woman was about 45 years old. She was making a tremendous effort to look 35. Heavy makeup, dyed hair, brand new clothes that should have been worn by a younger woman. No glasses. Well, women do that. Hey, listen, listen. I saw them too, and I was the closest one to her. She had them, those marks on the side of her nose. What point are you making? She dyed hair, marks on her nose. What does that mean? Could those marks be made by anything other than eyeglasses? Uh, no, they couldn't. Did you ever see a woman who had to wear glasses but didn't because she felt it spoiled her looks? My wife. So she didn't want to wear eyeglasses out of the house, so people would think she's gorgeous. Well, when she saw that kid kill her father, she was in the house, alone. Do you wear glasses when you go to bed? No, I don't. Nobody wears eyeglasses going to bed. It's logical then to assume that she wasn't wearing them in bed. She testified that the killing took place as she looked out of the window from her bed. 
She didn't have time to put her glasses on. I say she only saw a blur. How do you know what she saw? Maybe there were sunglasses. Maybe she was farsighted. What do you know? I only know her eyesight is in question now. She had to be able to identify a person 60 feet away without glasses at night. You can't send someone to die on evidence like that. I say not guilty. Okay, everyone, those voting not guilty, raise your hands. You're alone. I don't care if I'm alone or not. It's my right. What are your arguments? Everything that took place in that courtroom says he's guilty. What about this business with the glasses? The woman testified in open court. And what about hearing the kid yell? Huh? I'm telling you, I've got all the facts here. You lousy bunch of bleeding hearts. You can't intimidate me. I'm entitled to my opinion. Rot kids. Work your life out. Not guilty. Not guilty. Hey, what's your name? Davis. My name's McCarty. Well, so long. So long. <laughs>